So hello and welcome once again to the next episode here at New Junction. Today you join me as I take a step back because today I'm doing the electrics on the Heritage Line. Um, you are doing the electrics? Um, thought that's what I was doing. So hello and welcome once again to another episode here at New Junction. I'm joined by a special guest today, John JMC, which you may or may not have seen on YouTube. Now, for those who don't know, John is my wiring expert, my sound expert, and I've asked John to come along today to help me unravel the wizardry around DCC Electrics for Model Railways. Yeah, sounds, uh, sounds more complicated than it actually is, but uh, you know that's what we're here to do today, so we're going to go through each section of the layout and uh, introduce some droppers on the track as we go along and uh, carry on from there basically. So there'll be a few little snippets I guess. <laughs> and hopefully all be well, you'll be able to uh, leave me in a position where I can do it my, on my own. In going yeah, that's, that's the main intention of today, so we'll see how we get on and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll uh, manage to get somewhere. <laughs> Right, I see you've got boxes of gear with you, so shall we get them out and... Uh... Uh, indeed, let's get on, let's get cracking. Let's go. So while John's inside setting up, I'm going to give you a idiot's guide, mainly for me, to DCCing a layout. So DCC, or Digital Command Control, is the ability to control multiple locomotives independently of each other per single electrical section on a model railway. Whereas traditionally, analog, you can control a section or one locomotive. There's a bit more to it than that, but that's basically it in a nutshell. And believe it or not, for all the wires and the technology, it's actually a rather simple process. So I'm going to go through with how I would set it up. So if we take a very simple track plan, here I've got an oval of track. You would then add a DCC controller to the mix, which would be joined by two wires. Now those two wires at this stage would be known as the bus wire, and that would do, believe it or not, very similar to DC control. However, we can go one step further. You can add more points of contact to the track on your layout. Simple process, you can either solder droppers to the track, you can either buy fish plates rail joiners with pre-soldered wires if you don't fancy soldering, and the original wire that comes out the back of the controller, which is a heavier gauge than the dropper wires, is known as the bus wire. Now the bus wire stays below the baseboard, traditionally, runs around the layout, and literally goes to a dead end doesn't need to be a connected loop. You can then connect the dropper wires either through soldering again or you can use connection blocks um, or connection pads, that kind of thing, to connect the dropper wires to the bus wire. In effect, this will mean the signal from the DCC controller will be very strong and the more locomotives you have, the more functions you have running, the more sounds, for example, the easier it is for the locomotives to distinguish the message coming from the controller. Still with me? <laughs> so as my layout is a modular layout, I need to go another step further yet again, because at each uh, section of my baseboard, so they're four by two sections, the rails will be cut, the bus wire has to be cut, so the whole layout can be portable and break into parts. So on my bus wire, the, layout, the wire that's underneath the baseboard, I will be adding in pluggable terminals. Very simple addition. Again, no solder required, just screw in the, uh, uh, stripped ends of the bus wire and away you go. So that's enough waffle from me. Hopefully John's in there and he's got his kit out. That's a bit odd. Let's go and find out.
Right, so what I'm doing at the moment is I'm stalling some DCC droppers off the uh, two sections of track we've got here. Um, so what I'm about to do is I'm about to drill uh, holes through each side of the track, one there, one there, uh, and then we'll use some of the DCC Concepts dropper wire and uh, we'll solder them onto the adjoining rails. So you do the principle of black is back, which is the method I use myself. And uh, yeah, we'll go through that now and uh, we'll install some droppers. So I've drilled the holes through, now I'm just basically going to feed the uh, droppers underneath this uh, first section of track. Obviously with the two levels we'll be able to hide the, uh, the droppers a little bit better underneath. Uh, and the reason we're doing them close to the baseboard joints is because we'll be passing the cables down to each end of the baseboard so we can connect them underneath so it makes it easier for you when you've set it up in layout mode or garage mode um, and go from there basically. So at the moment we'll just position the dropper in place, get our soldering iron which is currently switched off so we'll just have to wait a few minutes for that to uh, heat up so what I'll do while I'm doing that I'll just install the other droppers so we should just pop these in the general sort of census is uh, you know the more droppers you do on the layout the better it's going to be so DCC will only penalize you for having a lack of droppers as opposed to too many so the more droppers you do the better um, I work on the principle of doing every section of track has a dropper. Um, that way you're just in guaranteeing the best electrical continuity. Richard's very kindly uh, gone through and prepped all these wires, so he's cut them to the lengths he wants, and then he's gone through and tinned the ends of each of the dropper wires, so it's easy for me just to basically get them in and uh, flash them onto the, uh, the rails. So we shall just do that now. This is the part where I go quiet because I concentrate. <laughs> One thing to note with this uh, when you're installing these droppers is to make sure you're obviously the wire is below the head of the rail otherwise uh, it could make for a very bumpy ride. Right come on you I need some more droppers. Keep going and get on with it. Okay slave driver. So while John carries on behind you, he's tasked me with making and uh, tinning the dropper wires to go off the track. Now, very simple process, I'm thankful for. So all I'm gonna do is take in some more of the DCC Concepts wire. I'm actually cutting four foot lengths, as you can see here, of each color, folding them in half. I've roughly then got two foot, believe it or not. two foot dropper wires and then using the amazing wire stripper makes it look like an autumn doing simple as that done that's ready to then go on to be tinned which I'll show you in a moment so furthering on my journey of discovery while uh, wiring up new junction 2 you can see I've got my red and black dropper wires now these will need tinning so that when John uh, applies them to the track the rail um, it's just a tad easier Top tip for you, when you take the end, which has been uh, revealed, twist it up. It's a handy, tin from, handy tip from John, that was. It becomes much neater when it's uh, ooh, been tinned and is on the layout. Although you wouldn't see that. There you go. The other handy thing with doing the twist is uh, when you go to feed the wire up through the hole that you've created in the baseboard, you're not getting snagged on all the, uh, the threads of wire that are sticking out. Top tip. So the solder I'm using for the dropper wires is actually slightly thicker strand than what John's using to attach the dropper wires on the other end of the layout to the rails. This is what's known as high flux solder, which basically means when I uh, uh, tin it to the wire, it will flow better and um, I suppose fill the strands of wire with solder, thus making it better to attach to the rail on the other end of the layout. 
So using this 150 watt DCC Concepts soldering iron, apply a small amount and there you go. The wire is tinned and ready for John. I've just got to do about 50 more other things. So John, we're obviously adding dropper points to each modular section of the layout. So what we can see in front of us is the four foot section here. I would think I want to put one set of droppers per line on this four foot board, but you're saying we need more. Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, um, DCC is only ever going to penalise you for not having enough droppers. Um, so the more you can do the better. Um, so as an example, on this particular section of board here, we've essentially got six pieces of track. Um, so we want a pair of droppers there, a pair of droppers there, two on the point, two there, two there, two there. So they basically you're gonna end up with six pairs of droppers coming off this one four foot module. Um, but by doing that though, if you get a break in the rail or any break in your fish plates or anything like that, you're just ensuring you get the best continuity all the way through your track so you'll get the best out of your layout so in effect once it's all ballasted and scenic up and at an exhibition a dodgy fish plate isn't going to stop everything no uh, dodgy fish plate won't cause you any grief at all um, because you've gone through and wired up each individual section of track on its own so by doing it this way you just ensure the best for it obviously it's a lot more effort than just doing the one yeah it does uh, it does involve a little bit more effort on your part so as you say you know normally you would just do uh, a two there and two there but in this case we're going to end up using uh, six pairs in total so yeah a little bit more painstake but uh, in that sense you're going to you're just going to benefit from it long term um, you know you'll get the best out of the layout you get the best running out of your locos uh, because you're not finding little dead spots on the layout so so would it, you say it's well worth the effort yeah I would definitely say it's worth the effort oh, um, I'm glad you said that crack on <laughs> thanks <laughs> <laughs> So we're at the end of, well, an electrifying day, <laughs> dare I say it. You've pretty much fit, fitted all the droppers and uh, soldered all the um, copper clad sleepers on the Yeah, design. you could say all of them, but I've left you some homework. A few, so, a few. Yeah, so I've left you a, a few copper clad rail baseboard joints to deal with and uh, four pairs of droppers to do. So your skills will be put to the test, my friend. In the next section of this video. So you'll either see John come back <laughs> and me in tears, or what you've taught, taught me today will have uh, rubbed off. Hopefully, fingers crossed. I'll uh, wait and see if I get a phone call on my drive home. <laughs> now, of course, um, for those at home who may not have seen your channel before, John JMC, you do a bi-weekly uh, live stream? I do, yes. So uh, Tell us about it. tend to do it uh, every two weeks on a Sunday night at uh, 7 o'clock in the evening. Uh, and it's a little talk um, basically just about my layout at home, uh, where I've got multiple uh, webcams set up around the layout so we can do multiple sort of shots of the layout. Uh, and of course, there's my lovely face uh, up in the top corner. Uh, and... Uh, you know, we talk about DCC, we talk about layout chat in general, what I find useful, what I find good, um, and just basically share people's comments. You know, if you've got a product you like, um, feel free to share it with everyone. It's uh, kind of a bit of a community kind of thing. So it's more of a, a bit more like a blog, 
than a, an actual kind of do's and don'ts kind of it's thing. Like an interactive blog. Yeah. You yeah. Can talk you, to you. Yeah, you can talk to me and uh, we can have a conversation about what, what I've found useful and tips or if you've got any questions about DCC or anything like that, you know, feel free to leave them in the comments and uh, I'll come back to you. And I have found it particularly useful because obviously I've been pestering with my questions for the future of this layout and it's electrics and you've managed to answer them all. So, and do it all. Yeah, fingers crossed anyway. So far, so I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm doing quite well here. You may, without knowing, already have heard of John Jensen. Because obviously you work for Digitrains in the industry. I do. So uh, if you've ever seen the uh, Digitrains YouTube channel, um, you will notice uh, the name of John G uh, come up many a time. And I am John G. So I'm the workshop manager at Digitrains. So yeah, everything DCC, um, from your controllers to wiring to DCC sound to DCC decoders and additional accessory modules on your layout. You can come and talk to me about them, yeah. You're the man behind the camera. Oh, I am indeed the man behind the camera. Not even revealed again. I'm not the voice, though, actually. The voice is uh, our social media guy, actually. So uh, I'll let everyone else uh, figure out who that is. <laughs> I have a feeling you're about to be extremely popular because uh, for those of you, shameless plug time, for those of you who've seen the latest Hornby magazine, which is HM183, uh, we've sound fitted that 68, which is this 68, um, with rounds. your latest sound file. You have indeed. So yes, um, this is available from Digitrains. Uh, it's the uh, MS series of Zimo decoders, so the brand new uh, high quality, high audio quality uh, sound decoders. And uh, yeah, I've redone the uh, original 68 sound file that I did uh, to suit the MS and uh, much better recordings and much better audio quality as well. So uh, yeah, do look out for that one. And say, I bet that's going to be popular when the uh, Acura Scale Nova 3 Mark 5. Oh, I've got my set coming, I don't know about you. <laughs> oh, I've got my set coming. <laughs> yeah. It's like the only thing I've pre ordered, I think. Make sure I get them for the uh, the 268s I've got. Yeah, I, I mistakenly only ordered one pack though, so uh, I might have to try and twist somebody's arm to get a second one. Yeah. I'll get in touch. Apparently, they're on their way. I will say again, thank you very much for taking the time out to come down here and. Uh, Not uh, a problem. Not fiddle a problem. With mate. We're, uh, we're happily. You know, happy to help out where I can and, uh, you know, look forward to seeing the project as it progresses. Right, so I think uh, I should let you go home today and I think I should carry on with uh, the bits that John's left me to do for homework. Indeed. Take care, guys. And there we go. As you've seen, the heritage line is now all wired up and digitally ready. Big thank you once again for John for taking the time to come down and uh, show the likes of me how best to do it and how he would have done it. It's been a, a mammoth task, shall we say, particularly in this slightly warmer weather. Otherwise, hopefully this video has been useful to someone out there. Don't forget all the links to the products used and of course to John's channel will be down below in the description. None of them are affiliate, they're just standard links, but um, from trusted suppliers. Thank you as ever for watching, take care, and don't forget to like and subscribe this video. And of course, I have to say thank you to the channel patrons. And they are St. Michael's Junction, Johan Jacobson Franzen, Richie Clark, Matt Carmen, George, Micah, Chris Moss, Captain Tony, Southern, Steve Cheeseman, Steve Lockhart, Orail.co.uk, Alan, Christopher Hurley, Ryan Dixon, 801 Rail, Stuart Bumstead, Richard Horan, Harry Llewellyn Jones, Paul Smith, Dylan Chesworth, Jigoku Samurai, Simon Henrik, Andy Clark, CW315, Lewis Forrester, Sam Yates, Trish Bits, and Stephen Owen. Thanks a lot, guys. So take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.